so we've done introductions. Uh, that was a slightly old screen um, slide. So um, just to begin with, um, obviously Warwickshire Community and Voluntary Action. Uh, we're a charity um, and uh, part of our funding comes from Warwickshire County Council, obviously hence the close partnership and collaboration uh, that we do uh, and tonight. Uh, we provide, in essence, um, four key areas that we support uh, voluntary community sector groups with is funding, uh, so we can help groups identify funding. Uh, we can help groups identify volunteers or uh, policies on volunteering, how to manage volunteers ex um, in terms of best practice. Uh, group development. So if groups want to become a charity or want to become a social enterprise or want to develop and grow, we can help groups through that journey. And we also represent uh, voluntary and community groups in strategic groups within the county as well. Uh, so those are the kind of four key areas of, of Carver, uh, as we are known. Uh, one of the things we're very conscious of is that we have a presence in each of the districts and boroughs within the county. Um, and there is my equivalent uh, in the other districts and boroughs as well. Um, and certainly in terms of help, <clears throat> if, for example, you're from North Warwickshire, then you would speak to David, who's my equivalent in um, North um, Warwickshire. Um, uh, and hence, so also in rugby, none in Bedworth, etc. Uh, all those information is on our website um, of how you can get in touch with those uh, colleagues as well. So from that, I will hand over to uh, Dominika. Thanks, Chris. So in terms of the um, council grants, um, it is a fund which is aimed at community and voluntary organisations. Um, it provides each of the 57 county councillors with a pot of £8,000 to support small scale projects within their division um, and um, it has the following outcomes. We want Warwickshire to have a thriving economy and places um, that have right jobs, skills, education and infrastructure. We want to be a county where all people can live their best lives, where communities and individuals are supported to live safely, healthily, happily and independently. And we want to be a county with a sustainable future, which means adapting to and mitigating climate change and meeting net zero commitments. If we can have the next slide, please, Chris. Thank you. So in terms of um, the community capacity and improving health and well-being of people living in Warwickshire, the uh, grand criteria are improving community assets and their sustainability, improving access to services, improving financial capability, reducing loneliness and isolation, improving physical and or mental health and well-being, promoting equalities and inclusivity and improving the physical environment or reduce the environmental impact. So as you can see, the grant criteria are quite broad um, and uh, we do support a number of organisations uh, with a variety of um, their projects. Can everyone see the slide that I'm talking about, which says uh, about the fund grant criteria? Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, Right, so in terms of the eligibility, um, you can apply to the council grants if you are a constituted not-for-profit community organisation in Warwickshire. If you are a new group or non-constituted not-for-profit group um, working in Warwickshire, you can be supported um, by an administering organisation. So what that means is you need to find um, a form formalised group that will be able to administer the funds through their bank account on your behalf. We also allow applications from um, town and parish councils in Warwickshire and also schools if they're applying as a um, parent-teacher association or friends of groups. And in terms of the um, exclusion, so you, you, you can't apply if you have failed to meet the conditions of previous awards 
um, from Warwickshire County Council. So if you have received um, a grant from us before and you haven't been able to fulfill, fulfill that, you may not be eligible to apply um, to the council grants again. Um, you can't apply if you're a party polit political or lobby group, if you're an individual, and uh, we are unlikely to fund um, applications from statutory organisations, except for uh, applications from town and parish councils. Thank you, Chris. We can, I think we are on the right slides. I think perhaps there's a delay, um, but I think we are on who cannot apply. That's the one I'm seeing anyway. Yes, that's what we see as well. Yeah, great, thank you, Annie. Okay, moving on to the next slide, please, Chris. Okay, so there are some activities which are excluded from the from the grant. Um, and as I mentioned, it's um, any religious or party political um, um, sort of any projects that promote uh, religion or party political beliefs, um, any projects for personal profit or personal gain, um, costs relating to items already purchased. So anything that you had already spent and you apply to the council grants for is unlikely to be funded because the grant does not cover any retrospective funding. Um, any loans or debt repayments and any activities that are part of um, statutory obligations. We also won't fund any um, projects which are um, part of existing contracts um, with Warwickshire County Council. So if your organisation is delivering a commission service or if you have a contract with us, we are unlikely to fund you for that again. Uh, however, if you have got another project that you're thinking of, you're welcome to apply. Next slide, please, Chris. Thank you. So um, there has been a slight change to the council grants for this year and for the applications because we've recognised that um, the application did not quite reflect the um, option of applying for small amounts uh, compared to the large, uh, larger um, sums. And there was the same number of applica application questions and the criteria were the same. So we have made a change to the application form and you can now select whether you are applying for up to £350 or over £350. So if you are requesting less than £350, you should complete the relevant shorter application form. If you are applying to several councils at the same time, with the total amount which is over £350, you need to complete the application form for over £350 even if the amount that you're requesting from individual council does not exceed £350. I know I said £350 quite a lot there, so if, if anyone needs any further clarification on that, please let me know. But there will be a Q&A session at the end as well, so we'll, we'll have time to go through some more of the details. Next slide, please, Chris. Thank you. Um, so in terms of the um, awards of up to £350, we will endeavour to inform all applications, uh, all applicants within four weeks of the deadline date. We have shortened the window in which we inform the applicants for, for this uh, amount, um, as it seemed um, a little bit disproportionate to be waiting for six to eight weeks for, a, for such a small amount. We will be letting all applicants know um, of um, the arrangements for receipt of funding if you are successful, but we will also be letting you know if you haven't been successful. So you should be receiving an email um, with the decision after the deadline. Um, and then within six months of receiving the funding, all successful applicants will be required to complete a simple monitoring form uh, on the impact of their project. And we'll go through that um, a little bit later on what those questions are. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so in terms of the um, guidance for, for the application questions, um, there's only um, a few questions that you we will be assessing. So um, unlike with the awards of over £350, um, any uh, applications for under £350 are not going to be scored, so they will not be given a score out of 10, but rather we will assess against this um, sort of guidance. So uh, we... Um, 
we are asking uh, whether your pro what your sort of time scales are of your project to see that uh, it's deliver deliverable within six months of the receipt of funding. Um, just a, a point to note on this one is that if you are applying for a Christmas project or a seasonal project uh, and you want up to £350, you're more than welcome to apply to round one. You don't have to wait until round two. Um, as long as we uh, are made aware what your time scales are, um, that's all that we, we need. Um, we also want you to um, clearly state um, how the funding will be spent um, and uh, also include a proportionate budget, budget breakdown. So if you are applying for um, a specific activity, let, let's say, for example, you are an arts and crafts group and you would like some funding for materials, we would like you to provide us with um, a budget breakdown on that. So let us know what materials, how much that is going to cost um, and how that adds up to the total sum that you are requesting. And also we are looking for evidence that uh, the project is meeting one of the fund criteria. So we would like you to um, let us know and inform us how it's going to sort of improve community assets and their sustainability, access to services, um, how is it gonna, um, and you only need to meet one of those criteria. So um, improving financial capability, reducing loneliness and social isolation, improving physical health, mental health or well-being. Uh, promoting equalities and inclusivity or improving physical environment or reducing environmental impact. So you only need to meet one of those, um, but we, we would like you to tell us, uh, we need you to tell us uh, how, how you're going to um, deliver that. Moving on to the awards of over £350. So if you are um, looking for more than £350, then um, the application form will take you to different set of questions. Um, so if um, if you um, are seeking for, for more than £350 um, or seeking funding from more than one counsellor, uh, we um, you need to fill the um, application form for over £350. Okay, so in terms of awards uh, of over £350, we will be um, um, informing the applicants approximately eight weeks from the deadline date of the decisions. Um, again, successful applicants uh, will be notified um, of arrangements of receipt of funding, so we will let you know what you need to do next to get the funding. Within six months of receipt um, of funding, um, we will be seeking a project progress report which is just a short report with five questions asking you how you're getting on with your project. Um, and if there's anything that um, your local communities, um, uh, localities and communities officers can do to support your project. And then after 12 months of receiving the funding, um, we will also be um, requiring you to complete a um, end of project report which is going to um, be asking about the impact of the project. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we will go into those questions a little bit later on. OK, so this is the criteria. This is the awarding criteria for awards of over £350. There's six and they are scored. Um, the maximum point is uh, ma maximum number of points is eight. And there is um, two points for question number two and two points for question number five. Um, you need to score um, five or more points um, in order to receive the funding. Um, any application scoring four or less um, are unlikely to be awarded. Um, all this information is on the website and it's in the guidance notes. Thank you. These are some of the things to bear in mind when you are completing your application form. Um, so um, pay attention to what the question is asking. It's very important to evidence your answer. So if it is saying, um, how are you going to be um, uh, consulting or, or have you have you um, um, got any um, um, sort of, have you involved, involved the wider community in developing your project? We want you to let us know how you did that. Um, so it's important to, to let us know um, how you've um, come up with, uh, with your project and uh, what the need is from the community. Ensure that your answers are relevant to your local community. So 
um, make sure that you uh, make sure that you get that uh, local information. So, so uh, we we want you to let us know about um, your local community and how this project is going to relate to them. Also, submit evidence of cost where appropriate. So, um, you you are uh, welcome to provide us with additional information when you submit your application. Um, you can submit any quotes um, or any any further evidence to us. Um, through our uh, funding mailbox um, and the um, information on that will be on the last slide but um, you can do that um, via uh, emailing funding at warwickshire.gov.uk. You may also be requested to, su to submit um, a, a constitution or a governing document so uh, make sure that um, that document is up to date when you do apply to the council grants. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can access the guidance notes um, and any relevant uh, documents on our website where you would go to apply. Um, you cannot save the form um, when you do uh, make the application. So uh, what we uh, would recommend is that you use a, a word processing software um, and um, type all your um, questions and your answers separately, ready to copy and paste into the MS form. Over to me again, isn't it, Dominique? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, let's have a look. Just catching up with me. Um, bear with me. Uh huh. Yep. So, um, just some practicalities. Um, if you don't have a, a governing document, uh, Carver can help you with uh, a variety of templates and it's one of the things that we can support groups with uh, acquiring and developing. Um, and uh, as an aside, we also provide templates for policies and procedures which uh, are located on our resources page uh, on our website. Um, uh, there is flexibility within this scheme that if you're a small and unconstituted group, um, it might not be worth um, the the work to set up a constituted group or uh, certainly uh, become a charity, which can be quite onerous. So you can link up with more established groups and work under their auspices uh, and they would bank uh, the funding and you would need to follow their policies, et cetera. But it does, it is an option for those groups that aren't constituted or uh, formed. Um, now, um, you can contact Carver ourselves to see if you need assistance in identifying a group. I think in practice, um, where we've seen it as successful is, is there is already a relationship. Because if you can imagine, a group would need to trust the people who were working on the project, probably have a relationship with them before they would happy to take that on. But uh, contact my equivalents in, in the districts if that is a problem, and we can certainly see what we can do. So um, my top tips, and these are quite generic, really, uh, um, in terms of uh, funding applications. I think it's important to be conscious that it, it is competitive. There's no guarantee um, of being successful with applications. Um, obviously, Dominique has outlined the scoring system. Um, and if you don't get uh, in your application up to a certain threshold of scoring, then it's unlikely you will be chosen. So um, it's important to take some time and consideration to, to complete it. I think a really important consideration, uh, I'm sure everybody on the call and all those who apply are really passionate about what they do. But I think it's important in terms of bid writing that you get into the mindset that it's the funders' priorities that need to be addressed, not yours. Now, hopefully there's a crossover, but it, it's really trying to um, articulate that you're meeting the, the priorities that Dominica has outlined today. Um, 
really critical is reading the guidelines uh, and then rereading them <laughs> um, and really being um, uh, on top of, of what uh, what's required. Um, as Dominica has, has uh, uh, mentioned, the uh, best get the thing is to prepare your answers on Word document, say, and then just cut, uh, do a spell check um, and cut, uh, cut and paste those into the document because, you, as Dominica said, you can't save those. Um, really important to answer the question. Um, um, sometimes people say, well, I've answered that question earlier. That, that you know that is that is relevant. You've got to answer the question in the box that's that's asked for, because we, uh, funders won't go back to the previous box to cross reference. So really, an, answer the question as as asked for. Uh, have evidence, and we'll touch on a few bits of evidence next. Uh, have all the information requi requested. You know, don't lose out because something's not being added or submitted. In terms of application, try and be clear and concise. Um, not too many flowery words, you know, they, they don't uh, um, get any extra marks for, for that or, or, or waffle. Uh, that's my big downfall. Um, be, try and be clear and concise and, and certainly recommended to submit on time. Don't leave it to the last minute. Um, rush it and then, you know, not hitting some of these things that we've talked about. So, so give it plenty of time. I believe there's 45 applications already submitted, so um, they've uh, they've been quick off the mark. Uh, obviously, that's county wide. So uh, it, it, obviously, applications are, are open as we speak. In terms of evidence, um, just my final slide before I hand back to Dominica. Um, we can't all do questionnaires, surveys, etc., in finding out is there a need for what you're proposing, but you can gather conversations, anecdotal information. There may be some existing research, uh, things like on the Warwickshire County Council uh, website, Warwickshire Insights, um, the Joint Strategic Needs Analysis information. There's a lot of information on the Warwickshire County Council and partners' websites. Uh, that you, that you can use and, and and evidence that there's a need for for what you're proposing, um, or if you think there's a gap, gap, uh, you know, you you will know locally um, the situation. You've got a lot of local intelligence, um, so there's a variety of ways you can evidence that there's a need for for, for what you're proposing. Um, so don't think you you you're limited to more sophisticated surveys or questionnaires. They help, but you know, consultation can, and evidence can take many forms. Uh, Just to add okay. to that as well, Chris, um, sometimes even a quote from, uh, from a community members is helpful. It can be anonymized, but if it's, for example, something that you, you're passionate about and the community had sort of come together to, um, to say that, you know, um, it's something that they want, um, a quote, a couple of quotes um, that would really count as evidence. So it is really helpful to to hear from from those people who um, want those um, community projects to take place. Um, as I mentioned previously, uh, we will be um, uh, requiring you to return an end of project evaluation form uh, within one year of receiving the funding and within six months uh, when it comes to the um, awards, the small awards of up to three hundred and fifty pounds. You will be asked if your project um, has completed. Um, if it has, uh, you will be asked to provide information on your expenditure, um, any money that you haven't spent, how many volunteer hours were dedicated to the project and how many volunteers have you recruited as part of that. So it's important to keep track of your volunteer hours. Um, have you, um, how have you, the community and individuals benefited from your project? So. That can be direct uh, beneficiaries or indirect be beneficiaries. So it can be someone who had attended your project, but it can also be, for example, their family. So um, if that person is reporting that uh, their mental health and well-being had improved, has that uh, also um, supported uh, or has that sort of uh, positively impacted on, on their family and, and how, how that has uh, kind of um, widely um, um, 
kind of benefited benefited the wider community as well. We're also also going to ask you how many people have benefited and also information about any future plans of the project. So, for example, um, is the project going to continue after the funding is spent? Um, um, and if not, uh, you can also give us information as to why. At the moment. There we go. Okay, um, so these are just some of the important dates. Um, I know it's quite a small slide, uh, but one of the, well, the most important date is that the deadline for applications is 18th of June at five o'clock. Um, please be mindful that that date is a Sunday um, and do try to plan uh, and not leave your application to last minute. So it's important that you prepare your answers um, well in advance and don't leave it until last day. But the deadline, um, as I mentioned, is the 18th of June at five o'clock. Uh, we are running a number of workshops and the drop-in sessions across the county. So um, this um, webinar is just um, a sort of generic information about the grant itself. But if you would like some additional support and information, um, you are more than welcome to also come to one of our drop-ins and our workshops, which are listed on the screen. So um, we've got um, uh, some coming up um, next week um, and in the in the next few weeks. Um, you can book your place uh, via Eventbrite, um, and um, I will also pop a link um, to our press release in the chat, um, where you're able to access those links um, quite easily. Should be also be noted, shouldn't it, Dominica, that we will send out these slides uh, to all the people who have come on the call this evening. Um, yeah. So you will be able to access those as well. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, OK, over to me again, isn't it? Um, final slide from me, I believe. Um, just uh, to say um, one of the things that we touched on that Carver does is try and represent all voluntary and community sector groups in the county. And one of the things that makes that voice stronger is if uh, organisations can become members of Carver. Uh, it's free. Uh, as I said, we are a charity, uh, but we, we do have a membership, a uh, broader membership. There's a variety of benefits uh, on that. Um, one of the things that I don't know if you do know is, is the third um, bullet point down which is uh, our back office support services. So we have a variety of uh, discounted rates, if you remember, for um, designated service providers in terms of HR, IT, telecoms, finance and payroll. Uh, so they're available on our website um, and you can access those. Um, so these are organisations that are geared up uh, to voluntary and community groups, if you so wish. Um, and there's a variety of other um, benefits as, as well. So uh, not particularly onerous application and uh, you're then supporting the sector uh, across across Warwickshire as well. Um, back to you, Dominica. Thank you, Chris. So um, in order to apply, um, you need to apply online. Um, if you um, need support with uh, your application form, um, you can contact either your um, localities and communities officer or um, um, one of the CARVA, CARVA's funding and group development officers and they'll be able to support you with the application. Um, you can apply on our webpage, which is workshare.gov.uk forward slash council grants. Um, and I'll, I think I'll just give you a quick stop tour of the website itself now, um, as it had, it has changed since um, the last time we've run council grants. I stop this share then, uh, Dominique. Thank you, Chris. I think you should be able to see that now. I can see that, yeah. Great. So uh, we have just split the uh, website um, to into two. Um, the first section gives you um, information, sort of generic information on the grant itself, what the funding is for, all the grant criteria. 
um, and then we have some useful documents and how to apply. So um, we, as we've highlighted before, you cannot save the application form and return to it. You, you will have to complete it in one go. Um, so please make sure that you prepare your answers in advance um, and use the uh, list of questions documents. So these are um, PDF documents which you can uh, open, you can download these um, and uh, use those to pre-prepare your answers before going into the actual um, application form. The guidance notes document, again, that pops open and it gives you all the information you need, um, as we've uh, mentioned in the, um, in the uh, presentation this evening, um, and also where you can get help and support with the form. Yes, yeah, so these are all the drop-ins that we're running um, in the upcoming weeks, um, and you can book all your places um, through there. And we've also introduced a frequently asked questions section and um, how to apply on page two. So um, bear with me whilst that loads, please. Okay, yeah, so um, here um, there's a link to the Calva um, contact details um, and you, you, you're able to access that through there. Um, we'll give you some information about uh, when you should hear from us in terms of um, the um, um, sort of um, whether you've been successful or not. Uh, an example of uh, projects that um, um, can be funded by the grants um, and also um, sort of, um, some, some of the frequently asked questions that we get um, each year. And then to apply, you just click this link and that will take you directly to the application form. And again, there's some information on here and then you just go through the application form itself and then you click submit. So um, once you've submitted the application form, you will be getting a um, notification on screen to say thank you for your thank you for your submission. Um, I think one thing to note is that you will not be getting a, an email receipt um, due to the functionality of MS Forms. But if you don't receive an on-screen notification that you had submitted your form, uh, you're welcome to email us um, to funding at workshare.gov.uk, and we will be able to confirm whether the application had gone through as well. I think the next um, slide is just to open the uh, floor for any questions, uh, Chris, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, we, I don't think we need to go back into the slide. It's slightly out of date, isn't it? Um, thank you very much, Dominika. Uh, that's excellent. Um, uh, what I will do is open it up the floor to questions. If you'd like to raise your hand um, on the... Um, uh, um, the function. Um, what well, before people are thinking of their questions. Um, Dominique, what, what kind of range of, of amounts do you think that councillors uh, fund people or uh, groups? Um, yeah, so it can be anything from, let's say, £50 to over £2,000. So it all depends on the on the competition. Um, the councillors tend to be um, tend to look at uh, applications as a whole, um, the amount that they receive, and then they uh, try to support the groups um, as much as possible. So there will be instances where you may apply to 2,000 pounds, but you might only get 1,750 because um, it is a competitive um, competitive process. Um, but um, the yes, so, so we do get some applications for over 2,000 pounds. I think that's probably the most that uh, we would kind of award um, around that figure. Um, but you are more than welcome to um, contact your um, localities and communities officer if you have a project that is um, for more than that. Um, and um, there are some members in um, particular in urban areas. So, uh, for example, some of the Stratford members like to get together and um, sort of pool some of their funding to support uh, larger projects as well. Excellent, good. So I've had the first question. Uh, Joani? Sorry if that, that's pronounced correctly. 
Who are they? <laughs> oh, you're on mute. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, I, I have. Oh, yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, basically, I, I am a beneficiary with an organization called Otra Cosa Network. I, we have extended the group now. Uh, my question is in relation that it's going to be quite similar, the work that we have applied before, basically as to continue and add it a little bit more, add it to, to young people. Will that be eligible? Um, I would say it would be eligible. Uh, one thing we are uh, looking for, though, is um, some uh, form of sustainability within the project. So we would like to see um, a variation of projects. And uh, what we do want to see is a reliability on the council grants. Um, so it is something that we will look at um, and we, we will consider the application, but there's no guarantee um, that you will get the funding if you had applied and if you got the funding for the same project before. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No Rosemary? Yep. Hi, Chris and Dominica. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Um, as you're aware, we are actually, our area is actually covered by two county councillors. Um, can we apply to both um, for various bids? The second one is because we're the only constituted organisation on the community and we've got other groups now, we've got the Village Hall Committee and we've got um, the community allotment and we've got various uh, green groups developing. Um, we may have to put proposals together on behalf of different groups. Is, is that OK? Um, the first, to answer your first question, Rosemary, you're more than welcome to apply to more than one councillor. Um, again, um, they would probably look at the applications uh, together or I would be informing them that there was an application made to another member for them to, to kind of consider. Um, you will have to submit more than one application because unfortunately the form does not allow um, you to submit um, the same application to multiple councillors, but you're more than welcome to apply to more than one member. Um, in terms of applying on behalf of other organisation, um, I would say no. Um, however, it's something that uh, perhaps uh, we can pick up offline uh, depending on their circumstances. So if they are a non-constituted group and if, if they're only looking for a small amount of funding, um, they might not find it that difficult to actually apply um, with our um, application for up to £350. So um, perhaps um, if we if we just um, um, have a conversation offline or something depending on the circumstances and we can, we can see if um, there's any support that they can get uh, with applying. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Dominica. Can no ask that everybody mutes themselves if... Uh, um, if they're not already, apart from you, Dominique, obviously. <laughs> um, we've got quite a bit of feedback coming back from the uh, uh, thing. Yep, that's lovely. Um, any other uh, um, questions for, for Dominique and the team? Um, Is there anyone, oh, oh. Um, any of my colleagues that would like to share any tips or any information, anything anything that they would like to add? Well, while they're having a think about it, this, this is uh, nominated as round one. What, what does that mean? Um, so what happens with the council grants um, is that um, some members um, um, sort of allocate uh, their entire um, £8,000 within the first round. Um, and some areas are less subscribed. So what that means is if there's any money left over, uh, we will likely um, be opening around two, um, which does usually happen. However, there is no guarantee that the member will have um, allocation. So if, you, if there's something that you're looking at, for example, for Christmas, um, we would definitely recommend that you submit your application for round one rather than waiting for round two, because there's no guarantee that a, the member will have um, any funding left, and B, that you, you will be able to get the answer and get the funding to you before uh, your start of project and before your, before your timeline. Carol, did you uh, have a hand? 
Um, Dominique has covered what I wanted to say. I just wanted to reiterate that um, very often people want to do pre-Christmas activities and they leave it till the second round, which often means, as Dominica said, sometimes there's no money left in the pot or more likely they won't receive the second round money till after Christmas. OK. Um... Anybody else got any uh, additional questions? Um, one thing we can share is if you don't know who your local county councillor is, um, bear with me. Um, there is, uh, can you see that? Uh, we'll, we'll put this in the uh, follow up email. Um, has that come through yet, Dominica? Yes. Yeah, we can yeah. see that now. So all you need to do is put your um, uh, postcode in, um, and let's do one at random, and um, it tells you, uh, it doesn't tell you who your district councillor is because they're still, <laughs> they've obviously been decided, but the details haven't been uploaded as yet. But this postcode, the county councillor, which is the relevant one in this respect, is Ian Shenton. So that is, um, tells you who that is. Um, so that's uh, always useful if uh, every year we have uh, people who do say, uh, can you clarify uh, who our county councillor is? Is it the organisation's location, Dominica, that, or the I suppose it is, isn't it, rather than the individual chairman or the... Um... Yes, it would be the organisation and particularly where their beneficiaries are from. So if an organisation is... Um, if, if the organisation's head office is um, in Kenilworth, just for, for, uh, for the uh, argument's sake, but they're actually delivering a project in Stratford Town, then they should apply to the Stratford Town councillors uh, yeah, so um, it's it's where where really the people are going to be benefiting from. Good, good. Uh, final call for any any uh, questions or queries. Um, anything finally to say, Dominica? No, nothing for me. Just to to say thank you to my colleagues um, and to you, Chris, for driving uh, driving the um, webinar today um, and. Um, as I said uh, earlier, if there's any further questions that you have, you're more than welcome to email them to uh, myself, um, Chris, or to the funding mailbox, um, and we'll be able to uh, provide you with some further further information. I suppose the clarification on that, Dominica, is certainly if and groups always ask, is this is this applicable? Is this type of project that um, will be funded? That really needs to go to the Warwickshire County Council uh, colleagues. Um, we can't give advice on that. Uh, if it's how to uh, write the application and um, put the, the application in the best, uh, give you the best chance, then that, that's the Carver um, responsibility or we can assist on that. So I think that's an important distinction. Um, but... Uh, on that note, uh, there's plenty of time to catch up with the Man City Real Madrid uh, match. <laughs> we did think it might run over and, and we get into an important issue such as that, but uh, we're, we're well under time. Um, and uh, thank you for, for applying and coming on and uh, good luck in any applications that you may make.